So I'm going to do a quick retouch of the uh, Rara Jean shoot we did on YouTube the other day. And I've already, um, I'm using a program called Photo Mechanic, which I do my grading and selecting off my Sony. When I'm on Hasselblad, I use Focus program. And you'll see they're color coded and starred and I can pick the rating and what I want to see that can come up by file name or I can do it by now rating. And these are the sort of the rated pictures that, are my favorite the, um, the pink ones are the ones the model picked and the green ones are the ones that I have picked um, and I'm just going to now I'm I've already looked through these a couple of times and I think there's eight or nine pictures that have got the four stars and I'm just going to pick out the picture that I think best talks to me so that one I like but to me it's a little bit too strong in the eyes I like the laid backness of that one um, this is just, it comes down to personal taste. It's a, it really, see, I really like that one and I like that one. So they're my two favorite on the chair. Um, I like that, but I love this one with the movement. And if anything, that one there's my favorite picture from the entire shoot. So I love this slight bit of motion blur I got. Um, I think it's only shooting at about a hundredth of a second here. Yeah, it's a hundredth of a second. And I do that on purpose sometimes to get this motion movement. Um, but I might do this chair one because it's not it's reasonably sharp and everything that'll keep most of you guys happy. So if I mark it five stars now, I know which picture it's going to be. And I can just hit rating again and it'll bring it back into order. So from here, I'm just going to drag it straight into Photoshop and this will open it in Adobe Camera Raw. All right, so now it's in. The first couple of things, the very first thing I'm going to do is go into sharpening and turn it off. I hate sharpen. Um, come back to my picture. Um, sometimes I'll hit auto and then decide, oops, hit auto and decide, do I like what it did or not? And I definitely don't want the extra saturation. Um, the contrasting I'm not a fan of, so I only put 7 on. I think I'll just take this back to default and work on this myself. Basically I want to make sure I have my histogram pretty much in the center. It just allows me to do the most with it. So I'm going to bring my exposure just up a little bit higher to get everything sitting into the center. Then I'm just going to look at my shadows and highlights and protect them a little bit. So with my shadows, especially the blacks, I'm just going to bring my blacks a touch lighter, which will allow me to work my contrast harder in Photoshop. So I can just have as much detail as I like. And if you, you look at there on the histogram, you can see I'm just pulling some strength, so some light into the shadows and the blacks. The highlights, I'll just have a look at my whites to start with. And I'm just going to pull a little bit off and that again is just centering this picture down and this is just how I work this is the way I work my file with my Hasselblad I'll break my file in focus uh, with my Sony file I'll break my file in Photoshop I try and just get the most information into Photoshop I can and then I'll work on it the black and white I can just flick to black and white and have a quick look at what it's going to do in here hit auto again to decide is this going to give me the look I want I don't know I I'm tending to think I'm going to do my black and white work in Photoshop I, I just have a little bit more scope to what I want to do so if I think I just hit P and I'll show you before after now yeah I have taken out some of the contrast I had in the shot but now it allows me to put the contrast where I want it in the shot in Photoshop so I'm just going to make sure that my outputting is 16 bit where 300 dpi and we're coming out in Adobe hit open and this will open it up in Photoshop for me so the very first thing I'm going to do is just look at 
the image overall I really don't need to do anything with liquify or that so I'll run my action set my action sets pretty simple I have a layer just an empty layer for healing I've got a very small up curve and a very small down curve for dodging and burning. I've got my cutting layer, which is just working on a soft light blending mode, which means it makes anything painted white on there lighter and anything dark on there darker. I have my neutral color fill, which is takes it to a very, see how the luminosity doesn't change. So all this is is a solid fill layer set to a blending mode of color and the solid fill layer is pitch black. I then have my gradient map which will also turn it to black and white because I've used my gradient map from black to white. Um, gradient maps, that one there, or if you come down into here, it's down the bottom. So it's not the gradient tool, it's gradient map. Um, if I bring that on, you'll see that adds contrast and turns it black and white. And you can already see that's really punched me in a really nice black and white. So this is one of the ways I'll do my black and white but instantly I'm liking the tonality that that put into that picture so I'm most likely going to run with gradient map compared to well there's just doing it it's like a desat without softening it and as you'll see the gradient map just punches up but I don't need that layer on it's not doing anything if I have this layer on the final app is just an empty curves because I always will put a curve into it Sometimes on a shoot, I'll put a curve first and create my toning of the picture. Then I'll come in and retouch it second. And I think with this picture, I might actually work that way. So I'm going to start putting that original darkness back into that wall and putting a fairly strong curve, which is now getting it more my, like my look. And this is why I wanted to bring the picture in flat is so I could actually curve it up in here and then mask out where I don't want the curve so I'm wanting this curve on the background and I want to pull a fair bit of that highlight out of the background I'm not wanting the full curve on Rara so I'm just going to jump on my mask grab my brush tool make sure my brush is set to black uh, at the moment I've got normally do everything in one percent flow and I use my softest brush I can do but because I'm going to most I pull a couple of curves on this. I just want to quickly pull a fair bit of that off Rara. Uh, it's, it'll just work much quicker if I grab on a 3% brush just to push that in. And then once I've got it close to having her separated off the background, I'm now going to come down to 1% flow. And this is where I start to get my a um, little bit of a halo effect which I can just do very simply with one slider and the Hasselblad program uh, but this take, might take me up to six layers to get that same pop effect that is sort of looking quite nice to me I'll just do a before and after you can see how that's pulled her down nicely I'm still feeling I can feel the edges of this mask a touch but on 1% flow um, this is going to destroy any feel of those edges and I, it's all just by eye I'm just seeing where my eye is saying that doesn't feel right and I can't teach this this is your look this is how you work and everyone will have their own thing that bugs them so I'm pretty happy with that now let's drop another curve layer directly above this and let's do the same let's pull some so I want to pop Rara out really nice and that's that's looking really cool. I understand more 1% flow now and I'm just going to more work the centers of the picture. So I'm trying to stay away from the shadows a little bit and just work more of the lighter areas. And this is to get me a, a feel of how I want the picture. Then I'll come back and dodge and burn the picture and clean it up the picture a little bit and then I might do final little bit of toning at the end just get a little bit of it so I'm just popping her and the center out just a little bit more but you'll see even with this uh, mask you'll see the two different masks they're um, not I haven't taken them completely to black so 
just gonna yeah, I'm finding that vignettes falling off a little bit too sharp there and again this is so it's like the old dodge and burn days back with film um, I'm popping out where I want the eye to go um, I just want the eye to pull into that center a gradient map that's why it's missing it sorry cool so those two layers off bring those two layers on it pops so nicely cool so now I've got it roughly toned up to how I want it I am now going to come in and do some skin cleaning up and so forth first I'm going to look in and see what I need to do with healing tool and it's not a tool I use like to use a lot the one thing I'm going to do is because I know that Rara's not a big fan she has a little mole on her nose and she's not a massive fan of it so I'm just going to grab my healing tool and I'm just going to just take that out it's nothing much more this is a couple of tiny little skin blemishes I want to keep all her freckles everything else looks fine there there's nothing there that bothers me um, nothing there that bothers me so I'm just looking over her skin a bit and anything that sort of bothers me that's where I'm going to work on pretty much that's all the healing I feel I need to do cool so I'll come into my dodge and burn back jump back on my brush tool set my brush tool to white leave it at 1% flow and I always work the body first then do the face separate so just on the body I'm just going to come in and all I'm doing is anything that's a little bit dark or a little bit light I'm going to paint on the dodge and burn layer to try and just even out that skin a little bit so just little bruises and blemishes a tiny little bit of brush work on the layer so I'm painting white on the black mask and running it at 1% flow really makes it hard for you to ever see the edges of your mask and I'll just do a little bit here and then turn it on and off and you'll see how quickly a very small bit of this style of work works I don't want it flawless this is supposed to be a bit grungy in fact I'm way over flawless pictures some of my clients that want them I don't so just even that you'll see the difference that that has made just to those legs and I really haven't changed the shot at all all I've done is taken out a little bit of the blemishing on her skin we didn't have a makeup artist who did a full cover on all her skin especially when we're doing sort of high-end lingerie or swimwear they'll quite often do an entire body uh, foundation and when that gets done it sort of cuts down a lot of this work but with this there's a couple of little white blotches there and I'm just going to darken them just a touch just to take out you see I just zigzag everywhere anything that catches my eye I just quickly go over and a lot of these things it's one percent and I'm doing one or two brush strokes on this stuff and it's cleaning out so if I turn them on and off now that's cleaned that up heaps so I just come up a bit sorry about the budgie in the background I think there's a budgie outside and it can see it it doesn't need much at all little things like that scar I like the scar I'm not going to remove it we could see a little bit of motion blur we've got I love stuff like that so that never affects my pictures I pick I love movement um, I do have my own personal hang up and it's a little crease lines in necks so I tend to just lightly dodge and burn them back just a little bit because I don't like the the crease lines just upset the beautiful flow down the neck and into the throat so I'm just going to take them off a little bit so I've just anything that's a little bit too light I've darkened anything's a little bit too dark I've lightened and this is me a hang up thing I it's something I do see and everyone will have their little hates and that's one of mine so coming to a face very little I want to do that we're gonna see we've got light skin light skin a bit of dark skin I could darken those two but I might do a mixture of both I'm just gonna just take off anything that's a little bit blotchy or giving the effect or 
of bags so just a couple of strokes there come in here and bags is not the model it's light and because with this remember the light we're using we're bouncing a light off the ground um, although no this one no that's right this one was nearly certain let me double check um, nearly, yeah it's on the Sony so this was natural light so with it natural light I had a strong light coming through our skylights on this and that's why there's a little bit of bagging but if you remember I put the little bit of foam to get a bounce off the wall from the window I don't want to feel like it's been retouched except for the type of work you'd expect to be done in the dark room little things like this you see there's a slight little bump in her nose um, little things like that is I'll just by slightly dodging on the side I can just pull that bump out and fill in a little bit of the blotchiness in her eyebrows um, we didn't use hair and makeup on this shoot so it was fairly natural just it's more just evening out the the tones through so I don't want to have big light and dark areas and by me slightly shading both sides of the nose it makes it more a strength I'm just slightly darking the center of the lip the amount I'm doing is so small you've got to remember that all I'm doing is putting this very very small curve and where I paint white is what is coming in on to uh, the, that curve is just going to be placed in the areas I'm painting through the mask now I can and quite often get lost in this because as much as when you start off this it's a little bit annoying uh, in the way of you know I don't want to spend hours retouching but sometimes it just gets a little bit of fun uh, and it's really hard to actually stop yourself this picture's coming together quite nice jump back onto my white run through the center of the lip a little bit just a couple of strokes and all I'm doing is lightening up the mids of her eyes because again the curve is only letting me to it's only lightening or darkening the mid tones it's not getting into the shadows or into the highlights make sure that highlight line is forced a bit stronger Let's see before and after yeah so that five minutes I've spent has just taken off a lot of the imperfection marks and just evened out the uh, blotchiness in the skin again because we didn't use hair or makeup as she just had a very very light foundation and a tiny little bit of eyeshadow that's about all she did let's zoom out to the whole picture so I can call I'm gonna come in just a bit yeah I think I can't see anything else that bugs me there I think I, I just want to tone it a little bit more the entire picture make her pop a little bit more um, if I do a before and after it'll be a fairly big change because we're gone from color but you'll see that I've definitely popped her out um, if we take those three layers off oops, we'll leave the black if I leave that black and white layer on it's sort of closer to what we were take off the dodging and burning you see from this side out it's just cleaning up then if I throw on, there's my contrast with the gradient map, there's my first curve, there's my next curve. I'm feeling I need to put a little bit more pop into her, so I'm going to just, there's a couple of ways, I might look at putting a little bit of uh, levels into this. So with this, I can just work the mids, the highlights, or the shadows, and first I'm just going to bring the highlights, see how it's giving me this beautiful little pop onto her. And I think even with the, I like that I think, and I'm forever turning on and off that little bit of a pop, but I might just pull the blacks in a little bit. So it's like a linear contrast I'm putting onto this whole picture. Yeah, that gives me a nice little pop in the center. Just pops her out a bit. I could do a second gradient map. If I just run the gradient map again, right you'll see it just added another layer of contrast which is actually quite nice but maybe I don't want it that strong or maybe I, I can take this off now yeah I could so I might do that I mightn't put that on I might just put a second gradient map but just dial back the opacity a little bit so I'll take it completely off and dial it in just a little bit so I've dialed it in about 50% Picture's getting pretty close to finish. Um, 
I will put one more curve in because I'm going to put a slight up curve in because I just want to force some highlights a little bit. Um, let's invert that to black so it's not there. Let's get a white brush, one white brush. I just want to just enforce the the highlight. So I'm just looking at areas that I want to see where down the centers I just want them to punch a touch more so I just doing a V on the face across the forehead this is going to just be a little subtle thing it's a thing that I notice that leg looks a bit horrible but let's see what that did yeah it's so subtle but those are these are little things that are just finishing it to my taste I want to get that line in the hair and I am going to come back to my dodge and burn down the bottom. Just that little bit of blotchiness up here in the leg. I just want to pull that out. Now that I've zoomed back and put a little bit more contrast in it. Where I didn't mind this sort of muscle line before. It's bugging me now with that extra bit of contrast. I think that's pretty close. It is hard sometimes for me to stop. But... I do, don't want to push this too hard. I still want to keep it fairly natural. Another thing I quite often do is come to my dodge and burn, pull all the opacity off both of them, and then just bring it back till I find it's done its job, which I think is around about there, 79 to 80. I don't think I need the full strength on it. Yeah, I, I like it sitting there. It's actually feeling less retouched now. So I think that's about all I'm going to do on this. I can't think of... So all I'm doing is turning on and off layers. Maybe that layer is just a little bit too strong. So I'm just going to bring it back, take it completely off and dial it in. Yeah, I think I'm liking it better there. Yeah, I think that's me done. So if I just go before and after you'll see that it's given it a punch you'll see that I haven't done any sharpening I haven't done any cropping this will be saved as a tiff so I'll just save this out off as a tiff don't want it as a PSD I like tiffs um, they're, they're no different in files except the tiff's a little bit bigger and all my clients can ha I'll see the thumbnail of a tiff whereas they can't with a PSD just going to run the standard that'll be saved out like that so that's my um, tiff malade picture finished i will just run a couple of quick um i'm just going to flatten it down and make it 8 bit and srgb uh, just going then now i can look at cropping now i'm not a big fan of cropping i tend to like the picture as shot but there's a couple of things in here I, this was shot on the sony i tend to prefer square or the hasselblad crop so i might just crop this a little bit more to one of my preferred ratios so let's just try the oops wrong way the 4-3 ratio with that which is more the Hasselblad ratio it's looking quite nice in there maybe a touch too much headroom I'm not a big fan on cropping I prefer to get it don't mind that extra room but I think that actually works better pulls me into the center a little bit nicer um, from there all I do is resize it to the my web size and which is I tend to size at 1080 um, I'll put a very small sharpen for what's going to get lost on the web um, so it's pretty much just duplicating the layer in fact I run an action but let's let's just quickly do it I'll duplicate the layer I'll come up to image adjustment brightness contrast I'll take all the contrast out of the new layer I just made I'll then go up to image adjustment and go to I don't need to do anything else because I'm black and white so once I've done that all I've done is this layer is a decontrast layer and if I come into my filters and go to other high pass I run a 0.4 normally hit OK and then I just use a blending mode my normal go to blending modes normally overlay and I'll just turn that on and off you'll see it's a very very slight sharpen just to give it a tiny bit of pop watch it, what's going to get lost when I post this on the web 
um, just flatten that down and I just run an action which sends this file to four different places in four different sizes it's now going towards my website which I don't want to have too big so I try and keep the files below about 300k for my website so my website runs quick so that's done image finished hope you enjoyed if you have any questions please leave um, comments below we do have our tutorial website which we go much more in depth on things like this but this just gives you an idea of how I handled the rest of that shoot thanks for watching